What's the first thing that comes to mind when a company is listing at a valuation of 28 times PE? To give you some idea, 28 times PE means it takes 28 years to get back your initial investments. Well, for me, this company better grow its profit exponentially every single damn year. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show. Today, we are going to talk about an IPO company with 28 times PE valuation and find out if it is worth your money. I was referring to Seng Hing's IPO. For experienced investors, you probably know where this is going. For others, stay tuned because we are going to go through the home appliances business, which is a mature business, the strength and weaknesses of Seng Hing, and finally, what could the share price be on the first day of listing? In case you don't know what Seng Hing does, this is Seng Hing. I'm sure you have seen it before while driving on the road or even shopping in malls. The business is pretty straightforward. It is a retail store for home appliances and electronic gadgets. With a humble start in 1989, Seng Hing started its first shop with stocks worth less than 30,000 ringgit. Within 20 years, Seng Hing opened its 100th store in 2008. That's an average of 5 stores every year. Quite impressive. But then, over the next 13 years, Seng Heng nearly grew its store count by 5 to 105 by 2021. During this period, Seng Heng has implemented many best practices operating consumer E and E chain stores. Today, if you walk into a Seng Heng store, it feels almost like entering a Japanese store such as this one. It gives anyone who enters a Seng Heng store a good vibe with its bright lighting. Seamless retail model that offers a wide range of products under one roof. And a loyalty program that reminds you to buy the next item from Seng Heng. All that supported by an experienced and motivated workforce and a centralized logistics system running in the background. Seng Heng intends to raise 265 and a half million ringgit in their IPO exercise. And it is said that 60% of Seng Heng's IPO proceeds will be used to enhance customer experience while upgrading and expanding their chain of retail stores. 8.2% for developing new brand distribution business, 7.5% for expanding and upgrading warehouse and logistic network, 3.6% for boosting digital infra and the rest are for repaying the bank borrowing and listing expenses. This is the E&E &E retail sales chart from 2018 to 2020. E&E &E retail sales in Malaysia grew from 50.45 billion ringgit in 2018 to 54.6 billion in 2020 at a KGA of about 4%. Some of you may argue that this statistic does not depict the true picture of the industry growth since 2020 was hit by MCO due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Any industry would suffer a downfall during this period. Fair? Fair point? In fact, if you look at the growth from 2018 and 2019, the year-on-year -year growth rate stood at 15.24%. Bravo! As people increase their disposable income, they may want to upgrade their TV from 24 inch to 42, or maybe from curved screen TV to say 360 all rounded TV. Hey, you don't laugh, huh? If you're watching this video 10 years from now, maybe that is really what we will be having at home. Anyways, we are being pampered with all sorts of new tech and new gadgets these days, and that also drives demand for consumer E and E products. Well, all that sounds good. In my opinion, those arguments to make you feel optimistic about the industry are weak. Weak. Yeah. Very weak. I mean, how many TVs do you have at home? One. Two? And how often do you change your TV? According to MCMC's data, 82.2% of households have pay TV, meaning you have some form of TV subscription such as Astro, Netflix, and that kind of stuff. Think about it, the prerequisite of a pay TV is only when they have a TV. I'm sure there are also households who only watch free to view channels. So Malaysia as a whole, what is the chance that you don't have a TV at home? Slim! Like, close to zero. The point I want to make is that home appliances is a mature business. We don't change them often unless it's a replacement for faulty ones 
or moving to a new place. On the other hand, consumers have so many alternatives to buy home appliances from, such as mom and pop shops to bigger chains like Harvey Norman, One Living, and TBM. Even these brick and mortar stores transform themselves to sell online, they are still facing huge challenges from major e-commerce marketplaces that constantly offer discounts through their deep pockets to attract customers to spend on their platforms. Under such challenges, it is difficult to convince investors that this kind of business can generate high growth in both revenue and profit. Back to our story, Seng Heng, 60% of the IPO proceeds will be used to enhance customer experience while upgrading and expanding their chain of retail outlets. Not 6%, 60%. If you are confused about what that long sentence means, explain that in one word. It's renovation! Would that increase the chance to buy your next home appliance from Sengheng just because the stores are going to be bigger? Well, maybe, maybe. But even that, would that give Sengheng explosive revenue growth until investors are willing to pay 28 times PE on the stock? Hmm. I'm trying to imagine a scenario where I need to buy a new fridge. Actually, I don't need one. The last fridge I had was bought when I was 15 years old and it works perfectly fine. Anyways, just for the sake of helping Seng Heng to increase its revenue, let's just assume that I need a new one. Being somewhat internet savvy, first I browse through YouTube and realize these days the really cool fridges are the smart ones. The age of internet of things. Also being somewhat old school, I like to touch and feel the products before I buy anything. Especially big ticket items like a fridge. In this case, since Seng Heng is coming up with their mega store concept to feature many more SKUs, okay, I probably will pay the stores a visit to understand the product better and compare a few more similar options to see what really suits me. I believe most likely many of you have similar shopping pattern as me. From here, this is the interesting part. After I decide which model I want, I buy online. Why? First of all, I know e-commerce is a competitive space. So many platforms will be throwing marketing dollars or discounts in layman terms to earn my money. Moreover, since e-commerce is a marketplace, I'm able to take my own sweet time to look through the merchant that can give me the best deal instead of being stuck with what Singhing alone could offer. Last but not least, look at what I found while researching online. If you don't understand Chinese, basically they are comments about the bad experiences they had with Seng Heng. Not my comments, huh? they are real comments from people who bought things from Seng Heng before. Nonetheless, that's just me. Maybe you are a big fan of Seng Heng that contributed to their over 1 billion ringgit worth of sales. That's quite an impressive revenue number. However, filter down to the bottom line becomes a little bit more concerning. It is estimated that Seng Heng will make only 4.4% PPT margin in 2021. That makes sense because technically speaking, Seng Heng is a trading company. It has no proprietary products under its own brand name. It doesn't manufacture anything. All it does is buying something at a cost and sell it to consumers at a markup price. From an investor's perspective, I was shocked when I found out that Seng Heng, with a net profit of 55.6 million ringgit, is going to the market with 28 times PE. That's a lot of convincing to be made by the investment bankers to investors. Remember we talked about the industry growth of 4% from 2018 to 2020? I would expect Seng Heng to at least grow at the same quantum if they are demanding such expensive valuation. But then, it looks like Seng Heng's profit had been on a downtrend in the same period of time. Some analysts are using peer comparisons such as Mr. DIY, 7-Eleven, and Padini to justify Seng Heng's hefty valuation. But think about it. Although these companies are also consumer retail outlets, their product turnover is way faster than Seng Heng. On top of that, the per ticket item is also a lot cheaper than Seng Heng's offering. If I were to come up with my own peer comparison, perhaps stocks like Fiamma Holdings Berhad and Panasonic Manufacturing Malaysia's Berhad would make a lot more sense. The problem is, these companies cannot fetch the valuation that Seng Heng desires. What do you think? That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.